What's going on in Michigan? I know a little bit about it, and I love what I'm seeing. It's everything from pitchforks, torches, and shotguns. What are you seeing? You've been following this. You remember the movie Young Frankenstein? Yeah. That was a great movie, right? With Igor and all the other stuff, right? And love when it. They found, when they found out where the monster was, that Mel Brooks movie that's such a classic, the villagers lit torches and marched up the hill to the castle, right? That's what's happening in Michigan. The people have had it. You've got a governor there that would have made a great fascist. She has disregarded the legislature, disregarded the, the industry, has shut the whole country, sorry, the whole uh, state down to the point where you can't go to Home Depot, you can't go to Lowe's, you can't go to a building supply store, uh, well, to buy seeds or landscaping or construction materials because in her mind, that's not essential. The whole state is going bankrupt and she won't unlock it. So <clears throat> the legislature is voting against her. And the people, as you pointed out, I don't know, two, three weeks ago, have taken their pitchforks out and are lighting their torch <laughs> and they're surrounding the state capitol, screaming at her, let us go back to work. What you're doing is not constitutional. Yeah, it's amazing to me. It's also interesting to, to wonder why would she do this? She's in a state, for, but for the most part, is rural. I mean, it's a rural state, and they're not that outside, infected. Outside of Detroit, you're right. And I think you go all the way back. I don't know if you remember this guy. He used to be chief of staff for Barack Obama, a guy named Rahm Emanuel, who left the White House and went to Chicago and became the mayor for a while. Um, very illustrious career. Chicago led the country in deaths by, sh by guns, even though they had the most aggressive anti-gun laws in the United States. So he failed at solving crime. He used to say, we never let something like this go to waste. And the something- You never, never let a crisis go to waste. Never let a right. good crisis go to waste. Exactly. I was gonna fill in the blank. The crisis now is COVID. So you've got these governors like Whitmer in Michigan or Newsom in California or Cuomo in New York that are all talking about their vision for the way the state will be after we come out of COVID and we recover. The new normal will be in an image that fits their narrative. They're gonna use the crisis, as Rom said, not to go to waste, but to reformulate America to the America that they want. It's not an America that I am really enthusiastic about, Kent, because I gotta be honest with you, I'm a capitalist. I believe in, in people that work hard on make money and people that don't wanna work, well, they shouldn't be taken care of very much. I don't want people to starve, but I'm not gonna pay you to sit on your butt at home. And there are certain people politically in this country that feel, well, you know what? You shouldn't have to work. You shouldn't have to pay your debts. You shouldn't have to worry. We'll take care of you for sitting on your butt. Very That's not what made America great. It's interesting. As you know, I belong to one of the governor's associations. And a little, uh, little point we had on one of our conference calls, um, if you notice, and this, is, this goes, by the way, without exception, the states that are fiscally the strongest are, and have always had a, a track record of being fiscally managed well and being solid, they're the ones begging to open up quickly. Now, by the same token, also without fail and without exception, the states that are the worst, always been the financially worst, and they're a wreck. So in other words, you got Tennessee and Texas on the great side. They're begging to be open. They're begging to go back at it. Again, they're great financially run states. They're fantastic states. You take a look at the three states in the shitter. Who is it? New York, Illinois, California. They're locking their people up. They're gonna keep them locked up and scared while they sit there and beg for mercy and money from the federal government. Why is that? How can they get away with it? You know, as a political scientist who studied this for, geez, decades, I hate to say how many, it makes me feel really old. It seems to me that what made America great, which was the spirit of adventure and entrepreneurship and independence and self-reliance, all the things that the British who became Americans were all about has been lost on certain people 
in politics who have gotten into power and created the idea, well, it's not your fault. You don't have to work so hard. Uh, the man took it away from you and the state should provide from you for you. Sorry. If you read Lenin, if you read Marx, those are the socialist principles that have never worked on a national scale in any country in the history of this planet Earth. And yet, even though it's a system that never works, you've got people in this country that believe, well, try, and if you don't succeed, well, we'll just pick you up by the bootstraps and we'll pay for you. You know, when I was a soccer coach and a hockey coach with my little boys, they, the team mothers used to come to me and say, on this team, Barry, everybody gets a trophy. And I said, well, we're in third place. Why are we giving out trophies? They're participation trophies. Everybody's a winner on this team. <laughs> I refused to give out the trophies. I took them home and I put them in my closet and I got a real problem from the league. I, these are states that are giving out trophies for participation, whether you try or not try, whether you're a success or a failure. Look, I didn't say to anybody, Go borrow $300,000 and go get a degree in art history where there's no jobs. And now your loan should be forgiven by people who paid off their loans. Unbelievable. 